feels like a hurricane I am a tree Dead in me The way it lives Winds and mercy And all the love of sun I'm unaware of these Fictions eclipsed By glory like a hurricane, I am a tree, I'm busy to be, the weight of his wind and mercy, and all of a sudden, I am unaware of these inflictions, Father, I want to thank you for tonight, Lord, and I just pray that you would just bless the message that we're about to hear, Father God, and I just pray that you would let everybody's heart be open to it, Father.
And God, I pray that you just fill us with your Holy Spirit and your love, God. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. God Andrews to come up and bless us with his presence here tonight. We want to thank you all for being here with us tonight and showing your support for Scott. Uh, we know it's going to be a blessing. Bless up, sir. Well, first of all, I'd like to turn this mic on. Can you hear me? All right. I'd like to thank Nikki and Randy for inviting me here tonight. Uh, it's a very great honor to be here to share my testimony, or to share a message more than a testimony. Um, I'm not the person that I used to be, thank God. Amen. <laughs> Actually, I actually probably shouldn't be here. I should be dead. Uh, there's a lot of things that I did in my life that I'm not proud of. Um, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, they made me who I am. Um, I'm an addict. <laughs> Was for a very long time. Um, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here, and I thank him every day. I mean, I get up, and I, I'm just so thankful that I'm here, and I'm breathing, that I'm alive. I mean, I used to, didn't want to give up, get up. That's pretty sad. You know, to just kind of give up on life and don't really care if you're living or not, you know. I kind of uh, looked at my life as a cork in the water, kind of just bumping along with no direction in life. Um, Satan grabbed a hold of me and ducked me underneath the water from time to time. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't drown. Um, I was saved when I was eight years old. You know, I kind of question, question it or not, but I think God's been with me my whole life, pretty much. Now, I haven't been with God. You know, there's times that I didn't want God to be around me because of the things that I was doing in my life. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, He didn't let me go. He had a bigger purpose for my life, thankfully. Uh, so He didn't He didn't let go of me. And um, I lived a life probably of depression probably for about 15 years. Probably. It's pretty difficult to live that life, to um, live in such a deep, dark hole and with really no way to get out of it. You know, I told my dad, I said, you know what, dad? I said, I said, not you, not mom, not my sister, my friends. No one could get me out of that deep depression I was in except God. He's the, he's the only answer. He's the, he's the only answer. Um, so I'm not sure if anybody here is struggling with something, but you know he is your only answer uh, to get out of it. Now, uh, probably about four years ago, I tried to turn my life back over to God again, and I heard, felt the Holy Spirit come through me like I've never felt it before. And uh, it was the um, I'm trying to remember the name of the school shooting, but there was a school shooting that happened about four years. Sandy Hook, and I was I was writing a message on Facebook, and I began to cry. I mean, just trembling for I, I would say probably 40 minutes. Never felt that before. I was just so just emotionally drained. But but I felt that spirit come inside of me, and he he took over me. But there was things that I did not let go of in my life. I didn't let go of I didn't let go of. Uh, Marijuana. I didn't let go of alcohol. I didn't let go of cigarettes. I didn't let go of some friends in my life that were still, you know, still dragging me down. You know, and it wasn't their fault. It's my fault. You know, I, you know, I had I had opportunities to get out of it. You know, I, I I heard God telling me not to be around certain things, but I still still got involved in it, and and it ended up sucking me down further than I was, you know, before. And the great verse is Luke fourteen chapter, or verse 26, okay? And it says, Anyone who wants to be my follower must love me far more than he does his own father, mother, wife, children, 
brothers or sisters. Yes, more than his own life. Otherwise, he cannot be my disciple. And no one can be my disciple who does not carry his own cross and follow me. Well, you know what? That's so true. And I've decided to you know, bear that cross and follow him. And I've left everything behind this time. Now, did I leave it all behind? No. I've gained so much more in life than I've ever could have even imagined this time. But I left it all behind. I felt, I had one, one moment where I felt like I was leaving my friends behind. And I began to cry. And it broke me. Because I knew that I was leaving that life behind. That life that I kind of liked. Because sin, because sin, you do like sin. I'm not going to sit here and say that, that sin isn't fun sometimes, because it is. We all, I know a lot of my friends sitting over there, they know all about it. They know that, that sin can be fun. And, um, but I felt, I felt God pulling me away from that life. And I'm thankful for that. And then one of my greatest experiences that I've felt so far has been... Um, Surrendering cigarettes. That was one. That was my last thing that I was holding on to. You know, I, I, I wanted, I'm trying to live a holy life, and I'm trying to live as close as close to Christ as I possibly can. But that was the last hurdle that I had to let go of. You know, my dad told me, he "Goes, he goes, son, he goes. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know, God's telling you what to do, and you know what to do. But I will tell you this." that does hurt the testimony. So I told my dad, I said, I, I, you all, I told my dad and I told God, I said, okay, well, this Sunday, I'm, I'm going to give it up. Well, Sunday, that Sunday came around, and I'm still smoking. Well, I was just so dejected, so disappointed in myself. And there's a pond that I go to, and I like to I like to catch the sunrises, and I just love to catch God's beauty. And the sunrises are the, they're just amazing. Sometimes they're just they're just a little glimpse of, a, of beauty, but sometimes they last a little while. But I just love to get up and see God in His in His beautiful art that He that He's going to show me. And I go to that pond. And there's a little cross there at that pond, and I go to go to pray and. As I'm leaving that, you know, leaving the cross after I prayed, I'm still smoking, still dejected. I'm just so disappointed in myself, and I begin to break again. And God comes over me and breaks me, and I begin just to start bawling because I knew that I was surrendering it. I knew I was giving it up, and that's the only way to to live your life. And I told God, oh, backtrack just a second. I told God, I said, I don't know how many more cigarettes I'm going to smoke, but I guarantee you this. And when you make a promise to God, you keep a promise. Okay? So never make a promise to God and don't keep it. So I promised him, I said, God, I don't know how many more I've got in me, but I can promise you this. When I get back home and I take a shower, that is it. I'm over with. But I can't do it on my own. I am powerless. I am weak. Every person in here is weak. There's not a person in here that's strong. Don't think you're strong, because you're not. You're weak. You're very, very weak. And the flesh is weak. Satan is out there, and he is powerful. Don't think that he is not powerful, because he is very powerful. But God is more powerful. Amen. Our God is more powerful. Amen. That's right. He is. Amen. So I gave it to God. I said, I got it. It's yours. I can't do it. But he can and he, and he gave me the power to get through it. Now that first day was eh, so so. Second day, complete train wreck. Could think, but I gave it to God. And he's got me through. Just like he can get you through what you're going through. Because every person here is struggling with something. I, can't, I promise you that. I can go ask every person in this room, there's something you're struggling with. And you know why you're struggling with it? Because you haven't given it to God yet. You haven't surrendered it yet. There's something that you're hanging on to that, that Satan doesn't want you to let go of. I promise you that. There is something that you're hanging on to that you have not surrendered to God. 
You have to surrender it to you because you are weak. <laughs> Every person in here is weak. There's not a person in here strong. But God is strong. And God can make you stronger. So whatever your problems are, whatever you're dealing with, you have to surrender it. That's the only way, you know. And, uh, you know, so that little lesson in life taught me something very, very valuable. That I can't do things on my own. I don't want to drive the boat anymore. When I drive the boat, I go into hurricanes. <laughs> very, very choppy water. But God, when you release the will of God, He'll take you into calm waters. <laughs> Thank Jesus Christ for that. Uh, without, without Christ and without the cross, we are so lost that we have no direction to go to. But He... He is the answer for everyone. He is the answer to your problems. Because every person in here is having problems. And I notice there's a lot of young people in this room. And I want to tell you something. Be careful. Be very careful. Because you could go down a road that I've gone down. Um, uh, you know, I always thought that the depression was caused by myself. That ain't true. The depression was caused by God. He was trying to tell me something. He was trying to teach me something. But I was too far away to listen, you know what I mean, to the, to the message. You know, there was, there was a lot of sin in my life, and he was trying to tell me, you know, if, if you're not being punished, then God doesn't love you, right? If you're sinning, you expect to be punished. That's all I'll tell you. I mean, if you're sinning, you expect to be punished. So, live a holy life. <coughs> Get the sin out of your life and live a holy life. You know, my, my life was filled with a lot of, you know, sex, sexual sin and a lot of problems with women and a lot of problems with drugs, a lot of problems with alcohol. I mean, just everything, everything you can ever imagine. And my depression was caused by my sin. It wasn't caused by my thoughts. It was caused by my sin. And what God was trying to do was He's trying to correct me get me out of that sin that I was in. Thank God that He has changed my life. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, when a person like myself that has all went all the way to the bottom, well, you get up every day and you thank God for it. But there's a lot of people here that have been hit bottom. They're never, you've never been hit bottom. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't get up every day and thank God that you're alive. <laughs> There's a lot of times that you know you're, you're you're going through life and you're getting you have problems. You don't understand why you have problems, right? You know what? I'll probably tell you why you have those problems. Because you're only praying when you need God. You're not praying when 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 things are going good in your life. You're not in the, you're not in the Word every day. He's trying to tell you something. Normally, normally things things when start things start going a little haywire in your life. Probably because you're you're not doing the things that God's want you to do in your life. He's probably trying to tell you something because you're 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 remember we're His children, right? He's trying to tell us something, right? So, you know, I, I, I've talked to a lot of people through Facebook and stuff like that. They tell me, "How oh, well you know I'm having this problem." I was like, "Well, okay, all right. Well, uh, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you read the Bible?" You know? Well, you know. <laughs> Sometimes God likes to put a little bit on you because you're not doing what He's wanting you to do. So you need to follow Christ. I'm going to go read one of my favorite verses. It's Proverbs 3, verse 6. I always like to look, look at it and make sure I got to read it correctly. <laughs> Even though I know it, I still want to look at it. And this is, I mean, this really is my favorite verse in the whole Bible. I mean, I think everybody, if you live this particular way in your life, then yeah, you're going to have great success. And it says, in everything, what's the key word, everything, right? Everything. In everything you do, put God first. Not second, not third, not fourth. First. Put Him over everything. Just like it says in Luke 14. Just, you know, 
bear the cross and, and love Him more than anything else in your life. So, in everything you do, put God first and He will direct you. Crown your efforts with success. So, if that's the key to success, then why wouldn't you put God first? Why are you putting other things first instead of God first? It doesn't make any sense. If that's the key to, to your success in your life, then put Him first. There should be no other person, object, anything that comes first in your life except God. You know, every day we should all get up and remove the idols. And, you know, I, I read in the Bible many times where I see this idol, 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 idol. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, this idol is, you know, it's a wood and it's short, you know, somebody's carving this, this idol, which it is, you know. But an idol can be anything in this world. It can be any object or any person in this world that you have an obsession over. You have to remove that idol out of your life every day. It's a daily struggle. Because Satan is out there, right? Don't forget, Satan is out there. If you don't think that Satan is out there, then you got a big problem. Because he, that's when he's going to snatch you. He's going to he's going to affect you. You know, Satan likes to, he, you know, especially for someone that really is trying to be outwardly for Christ. He's going to even try to be more into you when you're when you're away from God. He don't even care about you. You know what I mean? Because he's already got you. But when you're when you're out there and you're outwardly for Christ, then that's when he really comes at you. You know, he likes to poke and prod at you. He likes to come at your weak spots. Mine is, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm single. I don't have any kids, you know. And he knows that. And he pokes and prods at me and makes me feel unwanted at times. But you know what? Get out of here, dude. I don't need that. You know what I mean? We don't need it. Not, that's, and that's the key. Whatever your little problems are that you have, that you're insecure, insecurities, remember, that ain't God. That's Satan. He's trying to get you off, off your course. And when he does, go back to the word. Go back into prayer. This is this is where, this is this is how God speaks to you. Now, when you finally get close enough to God, He'll start whispering in your ear. That's a beautiful thing when He starts whispering in your ear. You know, God told me last Monday. He said, "You know what, Scott? You need to get away. <laughs> you worked a little too long, son. You've gone. You've gotten a little too crispy, which I had." I, mean, I got three jobs and I work six days a week and I'm a very busy man. And so I listen to God because remember, I can let go of the wheel. I'm tired of driving this, this boat. <laughs> I'm going to get out of that hurricane, right? <laughs> so I listen to God and He sent me to Galveston. Well, when I went down to Galveston, you know, uh, I just kept following God. Just kept following Him. So I met by a couple ladies in the restaurant that morning where I was staying at, and they needed to hear a message. They were struggling, and then one of them told me, you know, I've been really trying to get back with God. Well, it's sad to hear that, that she's not with God, you know, that she's trying to get back with God. Well, you know what? I'm glad that I am back with God, to be honest with you, and I hope, and I pray for that lady that she does get back with God, and, get, and, and that's all that she has on her, on her mind. Is God because when you do that, things start really clicking for you when you got when that's all you think about is God. But I left that morning because I didn't remember. I like I like them sunrises, so you know I, I went down to the beach and and I noticed this guy that he was ran into the ocean. I'm like that's a little odd running in the ocean. It's kind of chilly out here, you know. <laughs> and so um, I keep walking and this guy comes up and I don't know I, we. Share, you know, hi or whatever, and that's something, you know, me, boy, it's just God, you know, God, God, right, right, God. So I said something about God, you know, blessed or something, you know. I don't remember what it was, but it was something. And this guy begins to start crying. So I go walk down there to him. And um, thank God, God, he sent me down there, right? Because I listen to God, right? So he sent me there to be his messenger. You know, God sometimes is very quick. And sometimes he wants you to go through some things. But sometimes he's very quick to somebody's rescue. Well, 
thank God that he sent me down there because I was very, God was very quick to this guy's rescue. This guy told me that he had just got one into the water trying to cleanse himself of his past, his sins, and all this drug related stuff, you know, things that I've walked, you know, shoes I've walked in. And uh, so I talked with him, you know, and, and he tells me, I just screamed out to God, please come help me. Please help me. God's to his rescue. But the reason why is because God is working through me because I'm doing things for God. That's all I have on my mind is God, 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 God. So I listened to Him and He sent me down there to be a messenger for Him. How beautiful is that? So you have to start living that life. You know, forget about what other people think of you. Amen. That's a problem I had the last time. I, I, I was worried about what my friend thought of me or someone else thought of me. Who cares what somebody thinks of you? Only care what Christ thinks of you. Amen. When you start living that type of life, <coughs> well, a lot of doors start opening up for you. A lot of people you start meeting that you never... Every you meet. I mean, I mean it, I, when, I, when I was away from away from God, God wasn't away from me, but I was away from God. I didn't hardly meet anybody. <laughs> but now, since I'm following Christ, boy, He's just putting so many people in my path. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy the amount of people that He's put in my path. You know, there's another lady too I met down there, and she, uh, and I was this, this was a Wednesday morning. So I got another Monday evening, and I'm staying, and I didn't know how long I was going to be there. Just, you know, I packed a bunch of clothes and said, screw I'm out of here, you know. So Wednesday morning, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should leave Wednesday. You no, know, this lady came in there, and she said, uh, she was, you know, a devoted Christian too. She said, you know, we talked for quite a while. And she said, uh, Scott, you know what, I'd like for you to come to, uh, come to our church and share your testimony. Well, that'd be pretty good practice, you know, that test one not, right? <laughs> and so, I was like, you know, it didn't take me long to think, well, oh, you know what, I'm going to go. So I went down there, and uh, it was a blessing. I mean, it was a true blessing to be able to come up there and share, share a message with some, you know, message with the congregation. And now, I don't know who I, you know, who I help. I don't it doesn't really matter. But God, God, He's so powerful. I mean, you know, I didn't get up there with any clue what I was going to say. Just like tonight, not a clue. A couple of little scriptures, that's about it. But here He is just speaking through me, you know. It's amazing of what He can do when, you're, when you give your whole life to Him. When you surrender every single thing in your life. To God, it's amazing what He will do for you. And so, I, you know, I hope that, you know, this message has gotten through to some of you that maybe are struggling here tonight. Or maybe there's someone here that, had, that doesn't even know or accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's the only way you're going to get to heaven. Now, I've had a pretty rough day today. I found out there was a... Uh, I've cried many, many times today. Um... It's been a very rough day for me. Um, the owner um, of where I used to, where I still work, but he, he um, sold the company about a year and a half ago. And he gave me an opportunity when I was really needed it, and I'll never forget forget that. And you know, he's called me probably I don't know, maybe three or four days ago, and he told me he goes, Scott, he goes, I'm not, he goes. It doesn't look good. And he actually sold the company because he had cancer. So, um, but he told me, he said, Scott, it doesn't look good. I said, well, Ron, even though it may not look good, as long as you set, accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got nothing to worry about. Now he said, eh, yeah, you're right, Scott. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <coughs> you know what? Yeah, 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 you're right. I just don't know if that... I don't know if that is enough, and it's affected me. Sorry. Yeah, 
to see somebody go to hell. You know? And I don't know if he's going to hell. And I don't feel like maybe I did enough. So I know the life that he was living because I've lived that life before. And I sure hate to see somebody go down that road and to uh, not have Christ in their life. Because he definitely could change your life. And he's changed mine. And he could change yours. And he can get you out of the pits of hell. If he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. Ah, sorry. I think that's about all I have to say. I'm going to pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. And thank you so much for allowing me to um, get the words out through you. And it's only, it's only possible because of you, Lord. I'm no one. But you are just so beautiful and so amazing and just so loving and so kind. And I thank you so much for everything that you have done for me, for everything you've done for, for everyone in this room. I hope, I hope that they go away and use this message to the benefits of their lives and that they follow you more closely each and every day, that they have a desire every morning to learn you, to learn you better, to learn your word more, and to, de to dig deeper into you, to increase their faith, their trust, their patience, their tolerance. Lord, just pray for that. Just thank you so much. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We don't want to leave tonight without giving y'all guys an opportunity to, to maybe respond to something that you heard tonight. Maybe God spoke to you through that message. Maybe you have something that you need to give up. Something you need to let go, you need to surrender, you need to lay down before the cross. Maybe somebody in here doesn't know Jesus and they want to know Him. We just want to give you that opportunity to respond to that. You can come up and you can pray up front, you can grab one of us. My dad's over here, my mom, Scott. You can grab one of us. We'll pray for you. But it's got to be your choice, guys. So if God is speaking to you tonight, if He's, if he's told you something, if He's revealed something in your life that you need to surrender, please don't. Please don't leave without doing it. The Bible says that our lives are but a vapor. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow. 